Obviously, it is so important to be kind, caring, compassionate, but that doesn't mean that we have to be a pushover. It doesn't mean that we have to be a people pleaser or just get walked all over. Hey guys, welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Jills and I talk about things like feminine energy, self-improvement, and wellness for women. So essentially helping women step into their power. So if that sounds like something you're into, you should definitely hit that red subscribe button below and join the community. So being nice, being kind, that's a very important value of mine and that's something that I look for in the people that I surround myself with. But there's a very fine line between being nice and being nice and also being a pushover. And the two do not have to go together, even though it is common to see this. Remember that your kindness is a strength. So let's talk about how to be nice without being a pushover because I don't want you to stop being nice just because you feel like you're getting taken advantage of or people are pushing you around a little bit. It is so important as women, especially women who are in touch with our feminine energy, that we remain open-hearted and we don't let the harshness of the world close us off completely. So let's dive into that. Something that I think is one of the most important things here is having strong boundaries. And I think when we're naturally really nice people and we naturally just want to make people happy, it can be hard to stick to these boundaries. It can be uncomfortable to stick to these boundaries because sometimes that means disappointing people or not being able to help others out. When you lack boundaries, you can end up doing a lot of things that you don't want to do and spending a lot of time and energy on things that you don't want to be spending your time and energy on. And over time, if this gets to an extreme, it can essentially be you not living your own life anymore and it tends to be just everyone else's lives and what they want. And this can build a lot of resentment too. When we're so nice to the point of letting everyone walk all over us and not having these boundaries, well, that means that we're consistently putting ourselves last and that's not the way to live. You can still be a nice and caring person while also honoring the boundaries that you set for yourself and honoring the boundaries that you know you need to live in a way that works for you. So when it comes to boundaries, you have to figure out what you want and what's important to you. And if you're someone who consistently puts yourself last to make others happy, this can sometimes be a really hard question for you to answer. What do you need to thrive? What do you need to feel healthy, happy, and well? Well taken care of. What do you desire? So think back to some past experiences. Where have there been times where you let go of one of your desires to please someone else or where you really needed something for yourself but you let it go to make someone else happy. You really have to build this self-awareness to figure out what your boundaries need to look like for you. And once you figure this out, then you need to start communicating these and honoring these. Communicating these is not unkind, it's not selfish. It's how we take care of ourselves. Keep in mind that the only people who are offended by your boundaries are usually people who don't have very strong boundaries for themselves. So with that said, number two, a very practical tip, let's talk about how to communicate in a way that best gets these boundaries across so people don't take advantage of your kindness. It's best to communicate in a very clear, firm, but loving way, in a way that portrays confidence and doesn't involve any awkward hesitations. Through my own past experiences, I have confirmed that this is key. Say for example, that someone is asking you to do something that you don't really want to do, or you don't really have time for, or whatever it is, whatever the situation is. The way that you respond matters. Your body language matters. The energy you give off, it matters. If you respond like, eh, uh, I don't know, I mean, I really wanted to go to this thing later, versus, I'm sorry, Sorry, I'd love to help, but I'm busy during that time. When you aren't confident and clear in what you're saying, that is when people tend to push back. That's when people know that they can get you to do something that you don't want to do. And that's also when it becomes incredibly awkward. But when it feels firm, when there's a calm and loving strength behind what you say, people are much more likely to just accept it and respect it. As the confident, open-hearted woman that you are, you are kind and you try to be loving and compassionate as much as you can. But you also have to be loving and compassionate and kind to yourself. You don't need to feel uncomfortable communicating this. Seriously though, the key is to be super clear and confident with what you're saying and this really changed the game for me. Even if you don't feel confident, pretend that you are and this will help make your life a whole lot easier. Don't get me wrong, I love helping people and making people happy but not if it comes at the cost of my own happiness or it comes at the cost of my own self-destruction. Something else that is super important is surrounding yourself with the right people. Surround yourself with people who value your opinion, who want you to be happy, who want you to succeed, who care about you as much as you care about them. If you state your boundaries firmly but lovingly and you keep getting pushback or the other person is super offended, then that's not you. That's usually something that they have to work on within themselves. And that's all right. We all have things that we need to improve in our lives. 
But if you only surround yourself with people like that, then that's not really a healthy environment for you. Relationships are a two-way street. If you're the only one giving and helping and you're not getting anything in return or that love that you're giving out isn't reciprocated, then is it really a relationship? I realize that we can't just avoid everyone in our life who doesn't respect our boundaries. You know, sometimes it's really close family members. Sometimes it's people that we have to work with every day, but we can start adding people into our lives who respect us and care about us and slowly distancing ourselves from the people that we can who don't. It is so important to receive kindness and respect in a relationship, no matter the type of relationship. And if you aren't consistently getting that, then it might be time to reevaluate. So if you don't want to be a pushover, it's also really important to remember that it's okay to disagree with people. And I think sometimes when we disagree with people, especially people who we really care about and people who we don't want to disappoint, that it can feel a little bit heavy, like we're straining the relationship. But disagreement doesn't have to mean argument. Being able to disagree on something and speak kindly and lovingly in that process and still at the end of the day, still love and respect one another is a very mature attribute that I wish more people would develop. And you can just look at what's going on in the world for the past year or two and see how harsh and critical and unaccepting people are of other people's viewpoints and opinions. We are all uniquely different, a different set of life experiences, different childhood upbringings, different priorities and values, different strengths and weaknesses. And so there's no way that we are all going to agree on the same thing and we shouldn't and that's a beautiful thing you have to speak your honest truth and be okay with the fact that it might be different from someone else's it is not wrong to disagree with someone and you can still be a kind loving woman while still honoring your truth and once you start ignoring your truth you lose a big sense of who you are and lastly if you're getting pushed around if people are trying to abuse your kindness and you're letting it happen then a lot of times this can go back to a feeling of not feeling worthy enough or feeling deserving enough or not feeling like they're important or not feeling like their desires are valid. And this might go back to how you were raised or your experiences as a child. Maybe you felt like it was your responsibility to keep the peace. You didn't want to disagree with people. Maybe you felt like you just needed to agree with your caregiver so that everything was calm and no one got upset and so you ended up putting your needs last whatever it is but now that we're older and we can create our own life and our own destiny we don't have to keep playing out that same dynamic anymore as a wise and grown woman you can choose to start thinking differently and you might not believe it at first you might still believe that you're not worthy or not deserving but you can at least start acting like it. Eventually over time, the more you do this and the more you prioritize your health and happiness, the more your subconscious will believe this. You know, it won't be immediate, but eventually you will get there. Don't forget how powerful simple things like affirmations can be. And I know that they can feel weird sometimes, but this repetition will help get this message into our subconscious brain. And if saying affirmations like I am worthy and deserving, if that just feels too fake, too far out, does not feel comfortable to you, you can change it up and say something like, I am in the process of owning my worth. This is what I do when something just seems too forced and too unbelievable for me. Adding that in the process part of it works really well. Remember that your kindness is not a weakness, it's a strength, and don't let people convince you otherwise. The problem is when we don't extend that same kindness to ourselves. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button and subscribe below and join the community. If you're new here, I would love to have you stick around. Now with that said, if you resonated with this video and this is something that you struggle with, I'm gonna recommend you go watch my other video all about connecting to your intuition. Because if you are getting pushed around, if you have this intense desire to please other people, then sometimes this can mean that that you've just lost touch with who you are and your own voice and your own intuition. So I'll see you over there or I'll see you in my next video.